In the course of the history of Earth, there is a significant void. An abyss that has completely destroyed all of the scientific hypotheses available. How come? Welcome cosmic enthusiasts to another mind-bending journey with Spaceverse. Today, we're delving deep into the heart of our planet to unravel a colossal mystery, the perplexing puzzle surrounding the lost layer of Earth, and uncover the secrets hidden within this vast void. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and join our spacefaring community as we voyage through the cosmos together. Three billion years ago, this was the last time that a single-celled organism was observed on Earth, according to scientific records. Following closely behind is the multicellular marine sponge, which has been estimated to be around 600 million years old. It is the earliest known living creature for which we have clear evidence that it indeed existed. Naturally, this is a reasonable expectation. In addition to these two organisms, there should have been a great number of other organisms that demonstrated the transition from a unicellular to a multicellular condition. Nevertheless, isn't it inconceivable? To this day, despite the advancements in technology, we have not yet discovered a single being that is capable of filling this hole to perfection. Therefore, we are dealing with a significant problem. The history of Earth is missing a substantial section of its history. When measured in proportion to the subsoil of the Earth, its magnitude is comparable to that of Mount Everest. Dimensions We are not aware of the proportions of the layers that make up the Earth. For that reason, what is the origin of this analogy? Okay, here it is. The process of exploring the Earth's numerous layers enables discoveries to be made about the planet's history. I'll demonstrate how to do it for you. On the other hand, when this forgotten past is examined on a geological scale, it becomes obvious that a sizable component of Mount Everest is not present in the strait of the Earth. It is because of this that the question arises. A significant portion of the history of the planet Earth vanished without a trace. Also why is it that we have not been able to uncover a major piece of the crust of the Earth up until this point? To the best of my knowledge, not a single person has been able to completely circumvent this conundrum on their own. Once we return to the beginning of the story, we will be able to make this point abundantly obvious. One of the topics that was being discussed during the 17th century was the question what is the exact age of the Earth? At the beginning of the events that are detailed in the Bible, Archbishop James Usher, who served in an Irish church during the 17th century, stated that the Earth was more than 6,000 years old. During that period of time, everyone unquestioningly accepted this error as the life cycle of the Earth, since the Archbishop had determined it based on religious occurrences. How does the Bible contain errors in its teachings? A single person, on the other hand, questioned the reality of this age among the other individuals who had accepted it as true. James Hutton, a Scottish geologist, is credited with establishing the modern discipline of natural science known as geology. It was easy to understand James Hutton's words. The Earth is not ancient enough to have reached 6,000 years. The reason for this is because according to him, the formation of enormous geological formations, such as mountains and ocean floors, takes a very long period to occur. In that case, how is it that our planet has been around for 6,000 years? In what way is that even conceivable? The fact that Hutton had the audacity to disagree with the Archbishop was the primary reason for his social exclusion. When I was growing up, that was pretty frequent. This was something that even Galileo knew. On the other hand, curiosity is a limitation. Despite the acts of other people, Hutton never wavered in his belief in his theory, which he eventually demonstrated by presenting evidence that was very important. The history of Earth contains a significant chasm. A glaring void that has shattered each and every hypothesis that has been proposed by scientists. How come? It is essential to take note of this. This was the last time that a single-celled species was seen on Earth, and it was proved to have occurred 3 billion years ago. The next organism to be discussed is the multicellular sea sponge, which has been around for almost 600 million years. It is the oldest living entity that has been documented, and for which there is conclusive proof. This makes perfect sense of course. At some point between these two stages, a significant number of other creatures ought to have demonstrated symptoms of transitioning from a unicellular to a multicellular stage. However, does it not appear to be implausible? We still have not found a single organization that is capable of appropriately filling this gap, despite the fact that we have access to all of the technology that is available today. Because of this, we are faced with a significant challenge. A significant portion of the history of the Earth is absent. The size of this object is comparable to that of Mount Everest when compared to the interior of the Earth. Dimensions The dimensions of the strata that make up the Earth are not known to us. 
The question is where did this comparison originate from? The file that you requested is in the attachment. Through the process of digging into the Earth's many layers, scientists are able to gain a deeper understanding of her history. How is it? I will demonstrate it to you. The geological examination of this long-lost past, on the other hand, suggests that a significant portion of Mount Everest does not exist in the crust of the Earth. It was then that he started testing a variety of soil samples to support his allegation. Throughout the course of his investigation, he came to the realization that stones were produced as a consequence of the ongoing interactions that happened between the atmosphere and the water. In addition, the dirt was progressively eroding and reverting back to its original state. When the soil is compacted in this manner and subjected to great pressure, it immediately transforms back into stone. There is a slow and steady movement of everything. From this vantage point, Hudden made a significant discovery. Through his research, he discovered that the many strata of the soil, each of which was produced at a different era, provide information about that era. To put it simply, that is, according to Hutton, the processes that lead to the creation of enormous structures can take thousands of years. In the end, he made a significant discovery that shown that he was correct. Additionally, he published his hypothesis by utilizing these very same proofs. In addition, as we investigated it, Hutton's argument became international. After reading it, two facts were brought to the attention of the most intelligent people in the world for the very first time. To get things started, there are many different layers of soil that can be found beneath the surface of the Earth. In the second place, the history of the planet is preserved in each and every layer of soil. We are able to make sense of this by considering the Earth's function as a library. Additionally, it is composed of numerous layers of soil. A narrative is contained within every layer of soil. By reading history books, we are able to get knowledge about the past in this day and age. Because we are delving deeper into these strata, we are discovering a plethora of information regarding the history of these layers. Soil samples were gathered in large quantities by researchers during that time period in an attempt to piece together the history of the planet Earth. In addition to that, a map of them was put together. In its official capacity, it was known as the geological timescale of Earth. Within a short period of time after the creation of this map, a geologist made the discovery that the Library of Earth was without an essential book. That very book that describes the transition from a single-celled organism to a multicellular organism, which is precisely the phenomenon that scientists are attempting to comprehend in the present day. This is a significant problem in the field of science as my friends and anyone else who stays current with the scientific world are aware of. The only objects that we have possessed up until this point are theories, and those ideas are founded on models that make use of evolution theory in order to make predictions. On the other hand, we do not have any major evidence in terms of real physical verification. So what exactly is going on? It is interesting to note that two conflicting hypotheses attempt to explain the large rift that occurred in the past of the Earth. The most depressing aspect, on the other hand, is that the two hypotheses and the data that they present are incompatible with one another. I would like to query about those two theories at this time. Which of the two solutions do you think is correct? This will be discussed by us. In light of this, let's investigate how scientists fill in the blanks in the history of the Earth. It's time to pay attention, something has occurred. John Powell, a well-known American Grand Captain and geologist, started conducting rock analyses at Hutton Canyon after the publication of the Hutton Theory. His goal was to collect additional evidence that would provide credibility to the Hutton Theory. The reason for this is because geologists cannot find a better location on Earth to observe the numerous geological layers that are spread out in front of their very eyes, except for this particular location. Following his observations of the rock formations in the area, Powell came to the conclusion that a few of the rocks in this area had an extremely peculiar pattern. While the rock that was directly above it had a design that was horizontal, the rock that was below it had a design that was vertical. In light of the fact that Powell was familiar with the concept that underpinned Houghton's soil layers, he was cognizant of the fact that such a significant shift would not be naturally obvious in just two levels. Therefore, in his perspective, there ought to have been a third layer existing between the two layers that would have acted as a connection between the orientations of the two layers having been present. For the purpose of resolving his ambiguity, he dated the two rock strata. Moreover, it astonished him. He discovered the upper rock layer during the Cambrian period, which began 550 million years ago. He discovered the bottom rock layer during the Proterozoic era, which began 1.7 billion years ago. Both of these discoveries were made during the history of the Earth. 
therefore the distance between these two strata was 1.2 billion years earlier than it is today. This raises the question how the disappearance of such a huge layer of dirt is incomprehensible to most people on the planet. In a similar manner Powell was confronted with this question. For precisely the same reason, he embarked on a mission to discover a solution to this problem. In spite of the fact that he exerted a great deal of effort in this particular direction, he was still unable to find any clues that would help him solve this enigma. In addition to this Powell identified it as the unconformity due to the fact that the fundamental cause was still unknown. This indicates that it is contrary to what we would anticipate occurring in the field of geological science. There is no connection between the two. It is possible that you are beginning to question whether or not the loss of a single layer of soil in a single nation on Earth is indeed that significant. In addition, there is the possibility that a massive meteorite struck that region a very long time ago, or that there was a volcanic eruption that completely obliterated any evidence of the incident. Not only that, but scientists were also curious about this. This is the reason why the inquiry into the subject was started despite the fact that there was a gap in the initial probe. It was at that time that they discovered that this layer, which dates back to the Proterozoic Cambrian period, may also be found in the United States of America, Brazil, Canada, Scotland, and Australia. Because of this, it is not present on almost all of the continents. This situation became completely transparent at this time. There is evidence of this happening everywhere you look. Immediately upon the announcement that this phenomenon was occurring in every region of the planet, the name of the phenomenon was changed to the Great Unconformity. As a result, the 1.2 billion years that elapsed between the Proterozoic and Cambrian periods are not included in any of the known history of the Earth. This raises the question how? In light of this, one theory proposes that the Earth was shaped like a snowball over that period of 1.2 billion years. It is for this reason that the layer of Earth that was there throughout that time period has disappeared as a result of the melting of ice. When geologists started looking at those two strata they found many layers that were similar to cement and were black in color. These layers were located near to the enormous hole. These black strata are mostly the result of tectonic activity acting upon the Earth. For this reason geologists examined the data from the plate tectonics of that era to determine whether or not any tectonic activity had taken place during that time period. Their research indicates that the Earth was in a comparable condition approximately 1.3 billion years ago which is the time when this rift first started to emerge in the history of the planet. There was only one supercontinent that had started to break apart from the rest of the Earth at that point in time, and that was Rodinia. After exploding from the surface as lava, the magma that was contained within the Earth eventually transformed into rocks that were dark in color. There were two events that took place as a consequence of the lava reaching the surface of the Earth. In the beginning, the heating of the planet was caused by light reflecting off of the sulfuric acid that was gushing up from the lava. This led to an overall decrease in temperature around the world. A second consequence of the breaking of Rodinia was the appearance of rocks in the Earth's crust that resembled limestone. These rocks rose to the surface. In addition, after they had successfully captured the gaseous carbon dioxide that was present in the air, they started creating carbonates. Consequently, carbon dioxide gas was formed the quantity of which was gradually decreasing as a consequence of this happening. As a result of the fact that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that maintains the temperature of the Earth, the overall temperature of the planet experienced a decrease approximately 750 million years ago when the levels of carbon dioxide were significantly lower. The majority of geologists believe that the entire Earth from its poles to its equator did in fact freeze solid. This is due to the fact that these two factors were present. For the sake of putting things into perspective, this is how the Earth would have seemed to an observer flying through space at that same moment. Makes me think of it like a snowball. As a result of this, the theory that geologists have proposed is commonly referred to as the snowball Earth. This on the other hand is nothing more than speculation as was already made clear. This is a theory that is operational. The reason for this is that the black stone layer merely establishes Rodinia's existence, not ISIS. In order to provide evidence in support of their idea, the scientists embarked on a mission to find evidence that this ice does in fact exist. Researchers who were looking into this particular field of study discovered this. It is clear that the bottom layer is consistent as can be seen here. Having said that it does have a few lines that are slanted on it. As a result, geologists believe that these lines would have formed as a result of snow sweeping the dirt away from the bedrock. 
the layer that is immediately above the gap has a texture that is very uneven as a consequence of this. That is to say there was a period of time when the Earth was covered in ice. And as a consequence, the planet turned into a snowball. As the snow melted it left behind a massive layer that was equivalent to Mount Everest, which was then deposited into the ocean. It indicated that there was still a significant question. What was the reasoning behind the necessity of the evolution of multicellular organisms from unicellular ones in order for life to exist on this frozen Earth? In order to find an answer to this question, two geologists from Wisconsin University named Peter and Gracious decided to conduct an investigation into the 20,000 oceanic rock samples that were collected during the Cambrian period and were spread out across North America. The rocks in question were found to contain high concentrations of a number of elements, including silica, potassium, calcium, and iron according to the findings of the researchers. After some time, they came to the realization that in accordance with the snowball theory a sizable portion of the rock had also been washed into the ocean as a result of erosion. The elements that were present in the water started to multiply, and this is what ended up happening. The most devastating blow that could have been dealt to the little living creatures was this. Because of this the bodies of the creatures were stuffed with an excessive amount of elements. As a consequence of this individuals began to pass away one by one. In the evolving environment, these organisms adapted to survive by releasing excess elements in the form of calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate minerals, an intriguing process. Interestingly, these minerals initially produced for their survival took a transformative turn when life utilized them to create bones, teeth, and shells, leading to the emergence of multicellular organisms. This transformation likely explains the appearance of the first multicellular organism immediately after the identified gap, primarily composed of calcium carbonate. While this explanation seems compelling, an alternate study challenges the validity of the snowballer theory. Researchers from the University of Rochester examining Earth's magnetic field data discovered that just before its formation the magnetic field strength was at 99%, providing protection against harmful solar radiation. A weakened magnetic field would result in increased solar radiation, making the occurrence of an ice age improbable. Consequently, the snowballer theory despite offering a plausible explanation remains incomplete. The conundrum persists regarding the disappearance of a substantial Earth layer, but it's not the sole and solved mystery. Another intriguing enigma involves an invisible barrier located a mere 35 kilometers from two Indonesian islands Bali and Lombok, preventing the intermingling of animals and birds. This phenomenon remains unexplained, raising questions about its origins and characteristics. A heartfelt thank you for being here with us today as we come to the end of our journey at Spaceverse. Your support is what drives our investigation of the cosmos. Remember to hit the notification bell and subscribe to our channel so that you can continue to explore with us. See you until the next time we cross paths in the cosmos.